today, the topic of our, our Bible study uh, <laughs> is uh, of our word today is Jehovah Roy, which means the Lord that sees, the Lord who sees. And we know where that came from now, from the book of um, Genesis chapter 16, when um, Hagar was visited by an angel. But before we go further, I want to read the book of Psalms chapter 94. Psalms 94, 9 to 12. Psalms chapter 94, verses 9 to 12. Psalm 94 says, verse 9, He that planted the air, shall he not hear? He that formed the eyes, shall he not see? He that chastises the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, Shall he not know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. He that created all things, what is difficult for him to deal with? Brethren, today we are talking, this month we'll be talking about come up higher, and we want to let us know. That this God that we serve, <laughs> he knows all things. He knows the level you are in. He knows where you are supposed to be. And he's able to pull us up higher. At the Sunday school this morning where we were talking, we said, for you to be able to pull somebody up, you have to go down to the level of that person. At least your hands shall, can reach each other. Hallelujah. So God sees that affliction. He sees that pain. He sees that, that, that sickness. He knows exactly what to do in that situation. He can find out. He can find you out wherever you are. That is what I just want to encourage us with today. Brethren, today is the last Sunday of the month of, um, last Sunday of the month of um, June. Is the, that is dividing the year in half. Is dividing the year in half. So you have been struggling for the past six months. You have been working your own way for the past six months. We are being told here that the Lord is able. He can see. He see those struggles. He see what you are passing through. He saw this woman, uh, Hagar, in the wilderness, alone, troubled, having no direction, doesn't know where to go, doesn't know, didn't know where to do, what to do. Then he was visited by an angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord asked this woman, Hagar, Strange questions. We will wonder, he was the angel of the Lord. How come he didn't know where she was coming from? Because we will look at verse 8. The angel of the Lord asked her. He said in the Genesis, if you are there before me, Genesis 16 verse 8. Let's look at seven, from 6, from 7 to 8. 7 to 8, if you are there, you can help me read. I want to be sure we are here together. 7 and 8. Genesis chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. Somebody please help me read. 16, 7 and 8. Yes. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water. Angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness. Okay. And he said, Hagai, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou, and whither and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from? One thing I want us to note is that whenever God asks you a question, he does not need, he's not looking for information. 
Rather, he wants you to reassess that situation you are in. Reassess that situation you are in. And then, know what should you have done or are you doing the right thing? He had asked such questions from Elijah before, when Elijah was running. It's like, what are you doing here? And they started story. Now, as children of God this morning or this afternoon, imagine that that question was directed to you. Where are you coming from? Let's take a minute to imagine. If an angel appeared to you now or me and say, Yes, Omolara, Pastor Lara, where, where your name? Where are you coming from? What will your answer be? You can answer where you are coming from from birth. You can answer where you are coming from before you were formed. You can answer where you are coming from that you are where you are today. Where are you coming from? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 tells us that we are dust. And dust will return to dust. If he says dust will return to dust, he might not be talking about me. Until I look back at Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says, man was formed from the dust. So if you were formed of the dust... And you're a man. That's where you are coming from. Dust. From before your birth. So after creation, what are the things that we have passed through? How did we get to where we are right now? What steps have we taken? Are you is? Because when we talk about being a, 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 a dust, that's a beautiful thing. But man was born into sin, with sin, by sin. Hallelujah. And we have been given another chance to be reborn. In the book of John chapter 3 verse uh, 3, except a man be born again, we have to be reborn from dust into a better uh, life. Come up higher. We have been born again, if you give your life to Jesus, from just being ordinary dust, to a person of the spirit. That John chapter 3 verse 6 says. He, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And the one that is born of spirit is spirit. So when you are born of spirit. Where you, have come, you are coming from. Is now different. From starting from there. That is why you see people. They celebrate how long they have been born again. How long have they left that, uh, that level of dust to dust alone to a person of the spirit? Knowing fully well that God created you for his pleasure. Revelation 4, 11. Let's look at Revelation 4, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 11. Real quick. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. If you get there before me, please read. Revelation 4, 11. You can help me read, though. Even online. Revelation 4, 11. Yes, sir. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they, are, they were created. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power. For thou art created all things, and for thy pleasure they are. 
men were created. Brethren, you and I were created to give God pleasure. But we cannot start giving God that pleasure until we become his own. Because the Bible makes us to know that God does not even look at, the, at um, sinners. He called them the wicked. He can't even look at them, not to talk of them giving him pleasure. But he created you for our pleasure. So, if he created you for pleasure, also he has predestined you, preordained you to fulfill the purpose for which he has brought you to this earth for. Uh, our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Adeboye said, the reason God does not kill us when we get born again is because he has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me. Are we fulfilling that purpose? That is why when he asks you, where are you coming from? You have to be able to say, yes, Lord, I am coming. I have given my life to you. I am doing, I'm fulfilling, are you fulfilling purpose? Do we even know what the purpose is? Because when this woman was asked, where are you coming from? She knew where she was coming from. She knew she was running from her master, her mistress. She knew she had misbehaved. That was why she needed to run. So another question the angel asked her, still in that verse 8 of Genesis 16, is where are you going? The Lord that sees, he sees the future. He sees you. He knows if you, you can't lie to him. He says, where are you going? This woman did not have an idea where she was going. She just ran. How many of us just run like that? When situation arises, you don't know what to do. Let me just keep running. We do not wait for God's direction. We do not wait for God to take control of the situation. And they will ask you, do you but you say you are a Christian. Say, this one has nothing to do with Christianity. Oh, I just have to run. And when running starts, it means one is not in the right uh, place. She was not doing the right thing. Now, let us look again. Assuming you were the one that has been asked that question. From my line of thought that we, we, were born, uh, we were dust, my line of thought that we change level when we become born again. Because the Bible says, and a man uh, born again, you are a new creature. You become somebody else. That means you are not that dust, dust anymore. Uh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. And you are asked, where are you going? In this journey of life, what is your plan? What is your purpose? Where do you want to end it? In the book of John 14, from verses 1 to 3, I will not read it. Let's write it down to read. John 14, 1 to 3. Jesus Christ said, he has gone to prepare a place for you and I. But, despite the fact that Jesus is going to prepare a place, Two destinies are had ahead of us. The heaven or the hell. If you look, if you look at the book of 1 Peter 1.16, 1 Peter 1.16, Hallelujah, give me a second, let me open 1 Peter 1.16. The Bible says, Yeah, 16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Determination of where you are going. I, maybe two weeks ago, I can't remember, maybe within this month, I talked about choices we make in life. Those kind of choices determine where we are going. The choices. It says, be you holy for I am holy. I have talked about John 3, 3. 
Psalm 15. He says, Lord, who shall dwell in your tabernacle? Who is it that is heading? Who knows the destination they are going? Those who walk upright. We can read that also. You walk upright. You live holy. You obey God. You are totally obedient to him. When we are talking about destination, we can talk about short-term destination. Where am I going? Why am I doing this course? Why am I going to school? Yesterday, I started a class. And uh, all we did yesterday, first class, was asking us, why are you here? Where, what is the end plan for that you want to do? So, in life, every step we take, every decision we make, we have to know, where am I going with this? Short-term destination. Maybe you want to go from one country to another. What do you need to get to that end time, end, end, end the game? If you are going to, let's say you are leaving Nigeria to America, London, or Canada. Where do you want to go, Canada? What do you need to get there? I, we can see what we need to get there when the Bible passages have read for us. Like, you, want, you, you need your passport. You need visa. After getting visa, you can't say, because I have visa, I am going directly inside the plane. You need to still buy tickets. Also, the long-term destination that is making it to where Jesus has gone to prepare to us. We need sanctification. No, we need salvation. We need sanctification. We need total obedience. We need a life. A life of holiness. Obedience to the word of God. Running at the time of problem is not solution to any problem. The woman said, I was I'm running from my mistress. The angel of the Lord told her, go back and submit. Maybe in, in marriage, there is problem in your home. And all you can think of is, I have to go. We have to separate this thing. Go back and submit. Maybe it's a, uh, whatever, wherever you find yourself. Or God is asking you to do something. Go back and submit. He sees what you are passing through now. He sees how you find yourself there. He knows the solution. God knew the solution to Hagar's problem was to go back and submit. Because he sees, he knows. Is the one that created he is. He can hear you. Is the one that created the eyes. He can see. He created your mind. He knows what is inside of it. Just trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. When you walk with the Lord. In the light of his words, what a glory shines on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. But only if we trust and obey. Trust him. Obey him. Submit to his will. Have the mind of Christ. So that this journey, you know, somebody was, uh, 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 last time that I traveled, we have to get there. They will check, they will check you. They will check your passport. They will check your ticket to be sure you are not carrying somebody else's own. And all those things. Those are all those things that are checked even more in heaven. There are videos that can be shown unto us when we get to heaven. 
Things we do when others are not watching. Are we willing to go to where the Lord Jesus has prepared? Or do we want to go to where it's easy? The broad road. People, everybody is rushing there. Witty, 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 witty. Or do we want to go to the narrow gates? Where only the beloved go. Only the saved go. Where are you going? Angel of the Lord told Hagar, go back and submit. If you have discovered there is a way, a path that you have gone that is not where you should go. It is time for you to go to God right now. You know, you need to know that the Lord can see and do all things. But you always have a part to play. You have to submit your will to his own will. Don't be in the way of God. Be in his will. And you will not be the same again. Let us go to God. We have heard the word of God today. That the Lord Almighty should help us to submit to him. Our will. Our thoughts. Our ways, our actions, our choices. In the name of Jesus, let us go ahead and begin to tell God. Father, submit. I submit myself to you today. The grace to do so, so that my journey will not end in hell. My journey will end where you have gone to prepare for me. Father, give me the grace to submit totally, to obey you without looking back, to obey you faithfully. So obey you, excuse me, in faith, in the name of Jesus.